Hello and welcome to Whiskey Resource. My name is Mark and today I'm going to be talking about my value score. So if you're not familiar with it, if you watch any of my review videos all the way through, or if you've gone to my website and looked up any of the whiskies I've got listed, you'll see I have got a value score. I've mentioned the value score. I have touched on what actually goes into making up the value score in the past. Don't do it often. But it's the main attributes that a whiskey may have. So we start with price. We also look at the ABV of the whiskey. We look to see whether the whiskey has been chill filtered. That is the process of um, running the, the whiskey through a cooling system that causes some of the proteins and some of the fats, the oils, essentially things that can add to the flavour of the whiskey. Um, it makes them come out of solution. That is, the alcohol is actually a solvent and things dissolve it within it. The whiskey, as it cools, the solutes, that is the proteins and the fats, the oils, actually come out of um, solution and give the whiskey a haze. Chill filtration removes that haze, that oil, the fats, um, stuff that can add to the flavour of the whiskey. That's chill filtration. Not all distilleries will um, chill filter. There are whiskies that come out 43% ABV that have not been chill filtered. That's why when you um, add a little bit of water into the whiskey or if the whiskey is stored in a particular cold environment, if the bottle looks hazy, the whiskey will start to get the scotch mist as it's called. Um, whiskey that sits at 46% and above invariably is not chill filtered because uh, the alcohol is able to act as a, a better solvent and actually dissolve in the solution those um, compounds. The other thing we look at at whiskey is the colour. That is, is the colour natural or has it been enhanced with um, E150 caramel colouring? So that's another attribute we look at. And then when we actually get into the um, the stronger whiskies, essentially looking at are they cask strength and um, are they single um, cask release offerings. So those are all factored into my value score. And the value score is out of 100. Um, and you can look at the value score and those whiskies that are between 90 and 100 on the value score tend to represent um, a good whiskey that hasn't been chill filtered, has natural colour generally, um, has a higher ABV, a better presentation, a whiskey that hasn't had things removed. Because if we go back to chill filtration, um, those whiskies that have been chill filtered, they are going to be below 46% generally, with, with the exception of a few. So they've had some of those flavour compounds that actually add to whiskey removed. This debate amongst people as to whether or not chill filtration actually can affect the taste of a whiskey. Um, but why would you want a lesser whiskey? That is, um, why would you want a chill filtered whiskey if a whiskey could potentially taste nicer with the things in it that are being produced naturally as part of the distillation and maturation process? then it just adds to a better whiskey. And a lot of people agree that chill filtered whiskey potentially um, has suffered slightly. So the way I like to talk uh, or reference um, these natural presented whiskies is using the term, um, the best a whiskey can be. So a whiskey that is 46% and above, non-chill filtered, natural color, and of course, if it's cask strength and a single cask offering, well, that's the best a whiskey can be. You can't improve on a whiskey any more than those because that's it. You're not taking anything away. There's nothing, anything further you can do to the whiskey except for things like using um, high quality casks and um, keeping an eye on the whiskey at every stage of its maturation, which distilleries do. So enough waffling on generally what that is. I'll come to the actual calculation and I'm going to put up some graphics to explain what the uh, calculation and the value score is. Now, my website, whiskeyresource.com, it's it's building, it's it's having more and more whiskies added to all the time. Uh, I do research into every whiskey I put on the database. 
I'll first visit the whiskey distillery. I'll have a look at the whiskey detail on the website. Some of that information goes on to my database listing. But then I'll go and search retailers as well, and I'll find out what extra information they've got on there. But the, some of the core information that I have to make sure is correct is the chill filtration and the colour. Now, not all distilleries are transparent about chill filtration and colour. They don't state it anyway. I'm going to give some examples of that when I look at some scatter graphs I've done. Everybody likes some graphs. So I've done some graphs which are going to appear in, in this video. Um, so I'll, I'll touch on I'll touch on those distilleries or an example of those distilleries shortly. I want to be honest here and say that when I came up with the um, value score, what I wanted was a quick visual representation that you could look at and see um, in reference to the price, whether a whiskey was natural. Were you buying a whiskey as good as it could possibly be? And that can be seen by looking at the, the price of the whiskey and looking at the value score. But you have to make your own judgment as to whether or not a bottle of whiskey is affordable. We're not necessarily talking about affordability when we look at the value score. We're looking at, um, does what I am getting in a bottle of whiskey seem like it's a fair price for how much they're charging? So an example would be if you look at um, Ardbeg 25 year old, that whiskey costs nearly 1500 pounds for a bottle. When you compare that to uh, Lefroig 25 year old, you're looking at between 350 and 500 pounds for a bottle of Lefroig 25, depending upon which site you go to. Uh, I think the average price is about 450. Um, but when you compare a 25 year old Isla for 450 and a 25 year old Isla for 1,500 pounds, you can see instantly that the, the, the Lefroig is better value than the Ardbeg. But the value score adds an extra piece of information which may not necessarily present itself on the bottle or the carton. It's the transparency. And that's not taking anything away from, let's say, the Ardbeg 25. It's more than likely a fantastic whiskey. I don't know. I've never tried it. Um, and if you can afford it, you're not really going to be concerned about uh, the quality of the whiskey. But for people who really are sticking to a budget, my budget's £100 for a bottle. The closer I get to that £100, the more I want to um, see whether or not I'm making a, a, a purchase that makes sense. You can look at reviews and you can see what people say about a whiskey. But nose and taste experience of a whiskey is very subjective. It's very personal. Just because one person enjoyed it, another person may not. It may not be necessarily to that person's palate. An example of that would be heavily sherried whiskies. There are a lot of um, people who don't like the kind of sulfurous elements that can come out of a sherried whisky. And whilst there are people who love it, you're going to have a difference. You're going to have a conversation between what people like and don't like. The value score doesn't look at the palate and taste. It looks at facts, the attributes of the whisky that have been stated. And it then puts it into a calculation. So when you look at the Lefroig 25, you'll have a value score for it. And you can decide, am I getting a, a whiskey that has as much as it could possibly have to become a good value? You can compare a value score for any, any of the 25 year old whiskies and you can see what you're getting for your money in a visual representation of those attributes that I've mentioned. The other thing about the value score is that Whilst it's calculated against every type of whiskey, it works particularly well on age statement whiskey. That's essentially what it was designed for because that is what a lot of people drink, age statement whiskey. It works well on Scotch whiskey particularly well because um, a lot of Scotch whiskey is age statement and because of Scotch Whiskey Association rules, you, you, you're pretty clear as to um, transparency and truthfulness of a distillery to say that a whiskey is a particular age. That's not to say that whiskies from other parts of the world aren't, but for example, if you were to buy a whiskey from India or from South Africa, 
what organisation controls and regulates the, the whisky and has in force legislation to say that a whisky must be XYZ standard, like at age or the type of maturation they may have, what you can and can't do. So we're not, we're not really getting into that, but just to say that because Scotch Whisky Association have rules, it's easier to create a score. Now, non-age statement whisky, um, the calculation, as I'll reveal later on, does prove to be a little bit more unfair on that type of whisky. So the same would apply to bourbon. Um, whilst there are rules around American whisky, particularly bourbon, um, the distilleries don't necessarily need to be particularly transparent about the age of a whisky. So they do make it a little easy by putting on uh, bottles the word straight. So if a, if a bourbon doesn't have the word straight on it, it is going to be a two-year-old whisky. As soon as the whisky hits three-year-old, they can add the word straight, but they don't need to say the age because um, a whisky, Kentucky straight whisky on the label will immediately tell you it is at least three year old. If it doesn't have the word straight, you know it is two year old. But some distilleries on their websites over in the bourbon world will put on aged between three and five years. I'm not saying say any more about that. That's going to come up in the bit about the calculation. So I want to show you some scatter graphs, which is, as I've mentioned, the way that I want to sell. Um, the value score and how it actually works. So I've got three scatter graphs I want to show you. Um, they're all with uh, X, Y axis. On the vertical axis, we're always going to have the value score. And on the horizontal axis, it's going to change between three different ways we can judge the value score on a characteristic of a whiskey. So the first one we're going to look at is the graph age statement and you can see here, you've got in blue, the non-chilled filtered whiskies, and in the orange yellow, those whiskies that have been chilled filtered. And you can see this distinct grouping, clustering of all the whiskies that have been non-chilled filtered, which are in the higher band of the value score, generally 90, a score of 90 and above, up to the maximum of 100. You can see them all clustered together. And then in the lower portion between generally 87 down, You've got clustering of the um, chill filtered whiskies, and you can see as the age of the whisky um, goes up, the whisky still attains um, a value score between ninety and one hundred. That is the zone that the non chill filtered whiskies will sit in. Why? Well, because the way the value score is calculated, it takes into um, consideration the key elements of a whisky that makes that whisky. A better value. But the chill filtered, obviously you're looking at a whiskey that is generally going to be sitting at a low ABV because it's been chill filtered. Invariably a chill filtered whiskey will have added colour because distilleries want to have batch consistency and there's nothing wrong with that. It's a product that they don't want to get complaints about because it's cloudy, that kind of thing. Let's look at another graph. This graph, again on the horizontal, we have got the whiskey ABV. And on the vertical, we have value score. You see the clustering again, the blues relating to the non-chill filtered whiskies and the yellow orange, the chill filtered ones. And you see you've got that clustering again. You can see as the ABV of a whiskey increases, the value score for those non-chill filtered ones doesn't decrease particularly, given that clustering. And the final graph we've got here, again, on the vertical axis, you can see we've got value score once again. And across the horizontal, we've got the price of the whiskey. As the price of a whiskey increases, those whiskies which have non-chill filtration in blue are still clustering and they're not really dropping below the 90. Now on all three graphs, you'll see that there's actually three whiskies in blue which are sitting in the orangey yellow clustering. That isn't a mistake, it's a deliberate adjustment I've made to the data to highlight them. Because this is an example of a distillery where they haven't been particularly transparent about the process of chill filtration. So when I put this data set together for the purpose of these graphs, I made an adjustment to the calculation. So I've calculated these whiskies as being chill filtered, but I've left um, 
the statement as being non-chill filtered so the highlight is blue i could have put them as a different color but i left them as blue so that they became obvious as to as to visually on the graph so this particular distillery we have a, a eight year old whiskey a 10 year old whiskey and a 21 year old whiskey as examples and the particular distillery in question is glen farkless so with Glen Farkless, they don't actually see it on their website or on their bottles or on their whiskey tins, whiskey tubes, whether or not they chill filter or not. Now, it's commonly accepted that they do not chill filter. In fact, they use a more aggressive form of barrier filter. But they don't say that. We don't have a definitive they do not chill filter. So for the purposes of the whiskey database, and if you go on whiskeyresource.com and have a look at Glen Farkless, you'll see that they're listed um, as having a lower value score as reflected on this graph. And they are down as chill filtered because we have not got a confirmed statement that they are non-chill filtered. If they want to pour out information and say that none of their whiskeys are chill filtered, then that will change and they'll, they'll have an increase in their scoring on their value score. So that goes, to, that just demonstrates the level of um, detail that I put in accuracy and transparency on how I get that value score to work. If a distillery is transparent and they have proven statable fact, then the value score acts accordingly. So you can see here that the, the Glen Farkless it clusters quite well with the, the other non the other chill filtered whiskies, and it'd just be a great thing if they could actually put out a statement of the chill filtration or not. So the value score, I hope you can see here it, that it reflects quite a good way of visually cluing up on the natural presentation or not of a whiskey. And the way that the score works, we'll come to that in a moment, um, whilst it may be slightly complicated, if there are any um, whiskey bloggers, any whiskey YouTubers who would like to start using the value score, then you know what, I'll be more than happy. You can use it. Um, if you do use it, if you just reference it as the whiskey resource value score, and you can use the calculation and reference it quite happily. So now's the moment. I'm going to tell you actually how the calculation works. So I'm going to put a graphic here, which shows you the components. And I'm going to present a couple of examples of whiskies to show you how the score is actually calculated. So bear with it. It may seem confusing and it may seem a little eh, but it, as you've seen by the graphs, it works and it's actually quite straightforward. And if you're a whiz with Excel, then all you need to do is um, create a spreadsheet that automatically calculates the score based on the criteria. So the value score, it starts with 100. We'll start with the, the number 100. That's the maximum value score that we'll go with. Yes, a whiskey could pass 100, but we keep it at 100. There are other whiskies that have actually gone past that by a couple of points, 102, but we'll cap it at 100. As whiskies go up in price with inflation, those whiskies that do pass 100 will naturally drop down and sit up to 100 below 100. And of course, other whiskies will slowly have their value score drop but it's not going to be by an awful lot. I, th I think roughly a calculation would be that if a whiskey has gone up by £10, the value score will only pretty much drop by 0 0.6. So let's start with 100 on the value score. The first thing we do is we look at the average price of a whiskey. So I've always taken the best three prices. I typically stick with the same distilleries. Sorry. I typically stay, stick with the same retailers. So Masters of Malt, they're a pretty big um, whiskey retailer. They tend to have pretty much every main core whiskey available. So you can generally guarantee on them for a price. The second one is the Whiskey Exchange for the same reasons. And then we'll take a third. Now the third one um, will vary, really depend upon whether or not um, I can find a price because some of the smaller retailers doesn't, don't necessarily carry stock of everything. So I'll go with the likes of Royal Mile whiskies. Um, the uh, Tyne Drum or I'll go with Robbie's Whiskey Merchants, Aberdeen Whiskey Shop, those kind of places. Um, I'll avoid discounted prices, sale prices. I only go for the standard retail price. Some whiskey retailers will inflate the price 
and um, if I find that the price is not in line with what I found with Whiskey Exchange and Moss of Malt, then I won't include the figure. Um, other retailers will typically have a discount price down to how much Masters Malt and the Whiskey Exchange are selling as a discount price. I try not, I try not to avoid them. So once I've got three prices, I'll work out the average price. And then with the average price, I then divide it by the age statement of the whiskey. That's why age statement whiskies it works pretty well with because we have a definitive age. So for example, um, Bruno Harvin 12, uh, average retail price of 40. Two pounds and seventy pence. It's twelve year old, so you take forty two seventy divided by twelve, and you get an average of three point five five. We then subtract three point five five from the starting one hundred, which gives us ninety six point four five. If we look at rounding, actually it works out to be ninety six point four six. Okay, so we'll go with the with the um, the rounding ninety ninety six point four six. The next thing we'll look at is the ABV of the whiskey. Now, because this is all based on natural presentation and chill filtration particularly, um, we start at a, a ABV of 46. 46 is neutral, you don't get any points, you don't lose any points. So start at 46. Now, with regards to Buna Harvin, 12 year old, that has a ABV of 46.3. So we add 0.3 to the previous score. So now we've got 96.76 if the whiskey i'll come on an example if the whiskey is less than 46 percent then we'll take away whatever percentage is below 46 so a 40 percent abv whiskey it would lose six points off the previous score next we look at chill filtration well now i did the calculation for chill filtration i tried to work out how best to approach it with regards to keeping things fair in coming up with a score that was easy identifiable and the number i came up with was five so if a whiskey's chill filtered it loses five points the reason for the number five i want to come on to a bit more in detail but essentially it's because a cap abv at 50 percent once a whiskey hits 50 percent abv it doesn't get any more points for the abv so we've got a difference of 46 to 50 four points is the gain a whiskey can have on ABV and then we've got six points between 40 and 46 that a whiskey can lose on ABV there's another point which the whiskey gets which I'll come on to um, a bit later so because the Buna Harvin 12 is not chill filled it doesn't lose any points so it remains on 96.76 the final aspect of a whiskey that we consider with regards to this particular example is colour. Buna Harvin 12 is natural colour, so it doesn't lose any points. It doesn't gain any points. It's natural. Um, if the whiskey was to be coloured, it would lose two points. We don't really care too much about colour when it comes to a whiskey. It's good that a whiskey doesn't have any colour added. It's good that a whiskey tells you whether it does or it doesn't. Just put a statement on the bottle, make it transparent, tell us what we're actually getting. That's all whiskey drinkers that appreciate whiskey want to know. The second example I want to look at is another 12 year old, comparable price, Dalmo 12. Dalmo 12 retails for an average price of 43.70, £43.70. <clears throat> um, it is chill filtered, it is colour adjusted, it sits at 40% ABV. So again, we start with the maximum of 100 and we take the average price, 43.70, divided by the number of years, 12. So that gives us 3.64 per year. Take 100, take away 3.64, gives us 96.36. Next, we take into account the alcohol. It's 40%. The, the zero point is at 46% ABV. So... 46% ABV down to 40 is a loss of six points, six percentages on the ABV, six points. So that takes uh, it down to 90.36. Next, we look at chill filtration. I've already said it's five points that it loses. So that takes it down to 85.36. And finally, we'll look at colour. It is coloured. It loses two more points. That's 83.36 out of 100 that Dalmore 12 gets. So that is a full 
That is a full 13.4 point difference between Bruna Harvin 12 and Dalmo 12. And those point differences on the value is based on the fact that the um, Dalmo is low ABV, it's chill filtered, it has colour. Okay, so when you look at two whiskies on the shelf, when you've got Bruna Harvin 12 at 42.70 and you've got a Dalmo 12 at 43.70, there's a pound difference, the Bruna Harvins are quite cheaper. But they've got a value score difference of 96.76 for the Bruna and 83.36 for the Dalmo. Which one's the better value? Now you can see on the price that the Bruna is already cheaper, but are you getting a better value whiskey, even if the Dalmo was the same price as the Bruna? No, you don't, because it's a lesser ABV. It's had flavouring removed and it's had colour added. So that's the value score in a nutshell. Now I mentioned that the chill filtration had a score reduction of five and that four of those points um, was because of the ceiling that I put on ABV. So 46 to 50 percent, you get a four point difference. There is a final point which makes up why the uh, chill filtration's five points. And that is because any whiskey above 50% ABV, uh, I wouldn't say every whiskey, but there are some whiskies, the majority of whiskies above 50% ABV are cask strength. So we'll give a bonus point for being cask strength. So as soon as a whiskey hits 50% ABV, whilst it's not cask strength, it doesn't get an extra point. If it is cask strength, it gets the extra point. It's as simple as that. A whiskey could be set at 55% ABV, but if it isn't declared as being cast strength, it doesn't get the point. If it is declared as cast strength, it gets a point. I hope that clarifies that. I hope that makes sense. And there is one final point that a whiskey can get, and that is if it is defined as being single cask. And if it gets single cask, there's another point. So potentially um, a cask strength, single cask whiskey, bottled at an ABV above 50 um, will get the maximum possible points. It won't lose any points other than the initial calculation for um, the cost per year that the whiskey is matured for. So you can see that if a whiskey is great price, uh, is cask strength, is single cask, has good ABV, hasn't been chill filtered, is natural colour, a cheaper whiskey is always going to come out better than a slightly higher priced whiskey with those same characteristics, those same attributes. The other thing that I briefly mentioned was that um, non-age statement whiskies doesn't work particularly well with simply because it's the transparency of how the industry works. So when it comes to Scotch whiskies, non-age statement Scotch whiskies, how I calculate the age on them is based on the minimum Scotch whiskey rules which is three year old a whiskey can only be defined as a whiskey once it's matured for three years so for those i'll take the price and divide it by three you can immediately see that some whiskies are going to come off really really bad on the value score because of this a really good example would be johnny water woke up blue label it doesn't have an age statement you know it's fair to say that it is the majority of the whiskey is old whiskey we're looking at uh, the high teens into the 20 year old whiskies, but they don't put an age statement on. They don't even put a minimum age statement on it. You know, the way the age statement rules work is that you could have 99% um, of the liquid in the bottle is 30 year old. If they only put a teaspoon of a um, 1% of the whiskey as a 10 year old whiskey, you're not drinking the 30 year old whiskey anymore. Scotch whiskey rules, it becomes a 10 year old whiskey. So I apply the same logic when it comes to non-age statement. I have to go with um, the what is the youngest possible age for a whiskey to be a whiskey. And that applies to any non-age statement whiskey. When it comes to bourbon, if on the bottle or on the website, it actually says this whiskey has been aged for a minimum of between, and it says something like between five and seven years, I'll go with the youngest figure, five. If it says that it's aged between uh, 10 and 12 years, I'll go with the minimum age on that as to 10. Because they are giving us a, 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 an age statement, whilst they're not saying exactly what the age is, they're saying what the minimum age is. I always go with the minimum age. So in that case, it'll be the price divided by whatever that minimum age that the stated is. 
if they don't mention anything about chill filtration, if I can't find anything about chill filtration, it will always have points deducted for that. This is hopefully going to encourage distilleries if anybody actually pays any attention to this waffle. But hopefully it helps the distilleries realise that, that we want them to be transparent. And the value score, I, I was thinking of different names for it and I was considering whether to leave it as a value score or come up with something else. Like, because it is really transparency of distilleries. It is the whiskey attributes. Um, it's the natural presentation. Um, but I came back to value because at the end of the day, when we're looking at two whiskies on the shelf at the same price, we're looking at which is the better value. And the only way when it comes to a whiskey, you can really say what is better value is to see, well, what am I getting for my money? Bottle A, bottle B, Buna Harbin, Dalmore. Toss it between the two, which one's better value? There's no argument really. And all I've done is I've taken that decision-making process we make in our head and come up with a score. <clears throat> now I have put together a little table here, which I'm going to leave on the screen, um, which shows how you can actually calculate um, what the value score of a whiskey that is naturally presented would be, um, what the score would be as the prices change. So you can you can see that um, the prices for a 25 year old whiskey increase dramatically as the value score decreases. So you can see um, kind of a, a gauge as to where that whiskey would sit. You could do a scoring system like this for any different combination of um, presentation of a whiskey. Some whiskies may be totally natural but have color and you'd always lose two points on the score. All these whiskies could be sitting at 46% um, ABV and then you'd not lose anything on the score. But they wouldn't gain the four that they would do with these examples. I hope this all makes sense. Um, and if you've got any questions, I um, appreciate feedback. I'd like to have a little bit of discussion about this, see what you think of it, see whether it makes any sense. If it is a load of all baloney, let us know. I don't intend on dropping the value score, but if I come across any suggestions of how it can be improved, then fair dues. I really appreciate it. There it is.